Now let's turn our attention over to the big picture. We've gotten in a slew of economic prints coupled with a winning week on Wall Street, it seems. So Darius Dale is with us, founder and CEO at 42 Macro. Thank you for being with us. We had in the GDP print yesterday, the 3.3%, the PCE today, where that core now a lot of celebration, doesn't have a three handle, 2.9% yearly. Um, your thoughts on the big picture? I mean, we are seeing growth, but inflation coming in the right direction. Is that good enough? Indeed it is. Howdy, Nicole. Thanks for having me on the show. So uh, the short answer is absolutely. Uh, this morning's PC report overwhelmingly uh, supported uh, the current Goldilocks market regime. Uh, just to throw a couple statistics at you there, on a headline basis, personal consumption expenditures uh, accelerated to a well above trend, three-month uh, three annualized rate of 4%. Uh, that's a 10-month high. Uh, we had the core PCE deflator, which is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. Uh, that slowed to 1.5% on a three-month annualized basis. That's the lowest print we've seen since November of 2020. And then if you want to X out some of the uh, some of the more volatile components of inflation and isolate the super core PC deflator, uh, which is core services X housing, that three month annualized rate of change uh, decelerated to 2.1 percent, which is the lowest since June of 2020. And within that, thank you for all of that. Uh, you know, when we look at the consumer spend, we're seeing that that was up uh, 0 0.07 percent the estimates were lower for um, 0 0.5 percent that was the estimate shows the resilient consumer and that's really what has propped us up if the consumer takes a turn it'll be a very different picture and the fed will have a lot to discuss pertaining to that how strong is the consumer for 2024 yeah, it's, it's not as strong as it was uh, in 2023, uh, but the consumer is certainly still showcasing resilience, uh, especially from a balance sheet perspective. Uh, one of the statistics that we got uh, in this data point was nominal disposable, disposable personal income. Uh, that actually slowed to a below trend rate of 4%. Uh, but if you look at it on a ratio basis, you know this credit card debt thing that investors continue to hang their hat on, uh, it's only at about 5.2% of nominal disposable personal income. Uh, that's a four-month low and right at the same level that it's been basically trending at for the past uh, dozen years. Um, if you look at the stock of savings on consumer balance sheets, cash is at about 5% of household assets. You have to go back to the mid-1950s to see this stockpile of savings uh, on household balance sheets. So uh, the consumer is definitely going to slow down from an income support standpoint. We're already seeing that. Uh, we got nominal employee compensation out of this report. That's the broadest measure of wages and salaries that we get on a monthly basis out of the uh, U.S. economy. That number decelerated to a below trend pace of 4.4%, but still growing and still uh, still reasonably healthy. So with that and the picture that you see this, I mean, we have somewhat of a high rate environment. It might take some time to pull that down. Um, talk about investment plans for folks. I mean, I know you're looking abroad, too. Yeah, absolutely. So we continue to get positive signs of front loaded stimulus measures out of the Chinese economy. Uh, this Wednesday, we got a 50 basis point uh, triple R cut announcement that's going to unlock about 139 billion of fresh liquidity uh, into the Chinese and, and really global financial sector. Uh, we also got uh, uh, rumors of a $278 billion scheme uh, to, uh, to invest in Chinese uh, assets. And so we continue to see elements of policy support coming out of Beijing that are trying to reignite investor interest in Chinese assets. Now, I do not believe that what they're doing enough uh, in terms of these countercyclical measures is forceful enough to really you know, change the trend of the Chinese economy, nor are they pursuing the kind of structural reforms that are needed to really entice and get uh, foreign capital allocators excited about that economy. Uh, but on the, on the whole, taking this from a holistic standpoint, what they are doing is positive. It is supportive of the current Goldilocks market regime, and we may actually even see commodities start to catch a bid here as well in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, we've seen commodities, for example, oils that has been hovering around two-month highs while gold has pulled back over the last couple of weeks. Um, the final thoughts here are on the big picture for investors, even here at home, you know, tech has been the exciting part, has run up. I mean, uh, versus other sectors, do you think maybe there are some other value plays? What are you looking at here at home for equities? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So I'm a little concerned about the very immediate term we're talking over the next two to three weeks. Uh, we're getting some tactically bearish signals from the risk management elements of our process that tends to be, that is uh, independent from our research. Our research continues to be overwhelmingly bullish. And if we can survive next week, 
uh, we have a gauntlet of critical macroeconomic updates next week. Uh, we could survive that without any real negative news that threatens this Goldilocks regime. It could be off to the races into the spring. I'll just give you a few uh, uh, data points. So on Monday, we're going to get the quarterly refunding announcement out of the Treasury. On Tuesday, we get the JOLTS report. On Wednesday, we get the updated uh, 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 proje uh, uh, issuance projections from the second part of the quarterly refunding announcement. We obviously have the Fed on Wednesday. We get the employment cost index on Wednesday as well. We have productivity, unit labor costs on Thursday, along with the Bank of England. Uh, we also have the jobs report on Friday. And oh, by the way, we got Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, and Apple earnings next week. So there's a lot coming at investors. And from the perspective of our tactical risk management signals, it does pay to take down a little bit of risk heading into next week. But again, if we can survive next week, all these critical economic updates, macro, micro, and policy, and we, we could be off to the races into the spring if we don't get a real negative signal there. Yeah, I mean, when we're finishing this week, it's a winning week, the S&P right now still to the downside fractionally. But look, you know, we had winning record closes that we've seen for the Dow and S&P throughout this week. And so are you expecting to see some more records? Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, barring any real negative updates from next week. I mean, again, what's really underpinning this Goldilocks market regime, which uh, two months ago we were on the program, uh, I was with you in uh, New York on the program calling uh, for Goldilocks. Uh, though it's really underpinning that is the confluence of the resilient U.S. economy, the immaculate disinflation we continue to observe. We have green shoots globally from the perspective of global growth. And oh, by the way, we have a pretty uh, decent surge in global liquidity uh, that we continue to track and monitor uh, for our clients here at 42 Macro. And so if, as long as we don't get any information next week in that you know, cohort of critical uh, economic updates that really threatens any one of those regimes or really threatens the liquidity uh, uh, trend, then it's very much off to the races. New record closes ahead into the spring. Yeah, great to see you, Darius, and a great setup, too, for next week. You're getting us all hopped up because uh, I, I know I've been looking forward, obviously, to the Fed meeting, but so much busy week, a lot of earnings, no doubt. And this week was a really interesting one. A name like Tesla, week to date, down 14%. A name like Netflix, week to date, up 18%. So um, it has, earnings season has really shown some true colors of excitement. Darius Dale, 42 Macro, thank you.